This, this clinic, I will, I will forewarn you, was put together very quickly because less than a week, a half, week, week and a half ago, I found out I was doing it. So, with that in mind, um, there's going to be a little bit, there's going to be a little bit of disorganization in the presentation, but that also gets back to something I want to ask you, because I'm since I'm going to eventually cover four different types of roads, the ones listed. Do we want to, do you want me to put them out there as individual PDFs or just one giant PDF? And you know, because basically a lot of it's going to be repetitive because I'm going to show you basically the road type and I'm going to go in and, and, and talk about it. Uh, I'm also going to pass around something that I will be working on here shortly with you to talk about the road types, the three, the first three road types. Concrete we are not going to cover in, in this session. Reason being is that there is a whole, if you look at concrete roads, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing unto itself and it takes a lot of time because it's a pain. Long and short, concrete roads are a pain. Unless you just want to put down something that looks like concrete paint. You can put down a strip of uh, styrene, painted concrete, or aged concrete, and then um, go from there usually that doesn't look too terribly good it really depends on how much detail you want to put in is is a road part of your scenery or I mean I'm in the scenery so for me roads are important um, for you roads might be just one of those things you have so you know it's your railroad so do with it what you will. But anyway, I'm going to I'll pass this around in a second, but I'm going to, I want to talk about a couple things first. But those are the, the subjects that we're going to look at. Uh, a couple of basics. You got to remember, you know, what area you're, you're thinking about modeling. Uh, a lot of people like to do turn of the 19th century. So as a result of that, uh, you need to you know, ha kind of have in mind what's going on. Some people do modern. Okay, well then that's a whole different set of rules uh, that govern the size of roads and the width and so forth and so on. You know, just drive down any one of your 820s or your uh, you know, I, you know, I-20 or I-30. Any of those, you can see great examples of concrete roads. And what's even better, you get to see the patchwork the maintenance that's what that's what gives it character you know just sort of somebody laying down a strip of concrete yeah that's not a whole lot of character I just like putting on a foundation of a house and uh, you know you, you just don't see much of it but if you look at what's going on um, you begin to understand road widths I mean think about it uh, in the early in the early 1900s, when uh, trucks and all cars and stuff like that were just becoming really popular, uh, cars and trucks are only about six to seven feet wide. If you look at it from outside of the wheel to outside of the wheel, or in some cases, you know, since a lot of them had uh, overhanging. Uh, sides, so you, you look at the width, it's you know, about six to seven feet. So it was, that has really determined how wide your road's going to be. Or, how about your driveway? Just keep in mind, concrete driveways, as far as that goes, asphalt driveways, really didn't become popular until World War II. Or thereafter. Um, mid 20s you know basically 18 wheelers are approximately eight and a half feet wide that's going to determine the width of your road otherwise there's a lot of roads out there you know that I have come across and seen that an 18 wheeler gets to road the rest of us get to ditch I mean it's it's got you know, got to be careful on the, on the origin of the road um, Equipment's going to determine it uh, the yellow dump trucks now keep in mind if you're doing like a, a big gravel pit or anything like that. You know that little that dump truck that they load up? Oops. Yeah. That sucker is 32 feet wide. Wheel to wheel. Outside the wheel, out to outside the wheel. The earth mover. The earth mover. Well, the, 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 the dump truck, yes. Uh, that sucker is, is big, so keep in mind you're dealing with a different creature altogether. Therefore, the path that it puts, because it's probably going to be mostly on a dirt road, because it's going to be coming out of a pit or a mining area, you know, it's going to it's going to be it's going to be healthy. 
uh, it's going to be as wide as an interstate, but on dirt. And then you got the interstate. Uh, keep in mind that our entire interstate system was not designed for us. It was designed to move military vehicles in case of an invasion. That was the interstate system. That's how it got funded, and that's where we came from. So just kind of keep in mind origins and kind of go from there. Uh, modern public roadways are, yeah, Mike. Uh, and, and to reinforce what Jeff is talking about, about the military movement, think about who was president at the time that the interstate system was put into place. White Eisenhower. What's his background? He was a general. He's thinking about all that stuff, and that's why the, the interstate, interstate system was put into place. Sorry, I just wanted to add that. No, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right, so on modern roads, depending upon time again, whether you're 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, or later, your lanes are going to be eight and a half feet to 12 feet wide. Um, the con a concrete section is approximately 20 feet long. That's a detail point. Can you paint a uh, piece of styrene, lay it down as concrete eroding, and have no sections in it? Yes. It's your railroad. However, if you're trying to recreate something that looks like a concrete road that we drive on every day, the section is approximately 20 feet long. And that will vary a little bit depending upon which machine and who made the machine as far as the length. But 20 foot is sort of the current standard. Um, you'll also notice that roads, including asphalt roads, slope from the middle of the road down. Why? Rain, snow. They want the road to be, so to speak, to be self-clearing, but whatever. We'll get into some more, of the, some more of the detail. But the thing is, is that concrete roads are formed. I don't care where it is that the concrete's put down, it's put down in a form. And the reason being is that, one, it's got to cover up the rebar that keeps it together, provides its strength and the flexibility, and so forth. Uh, asphalt, gravel, dirt roads, there's no form. It's just literally poured out on the ground. And if you stop and think about it, what's asphalt? I mean, we've all seen it. Same thing. It's gravel. It's a gravel road that somebody put some bitumen, uh, a um, polymer in, or commonly we refer to it as tar, mixed it all together, poured it out, and then went over it with a piece of heavy equipment to flatten it out and to make it smooth. Um, but there's no forms necessary to, to uh, for the road. So, you know, keeping in mind what we're really talking about, we've already talked about most of this, you know, basically um, dirt roads or dirt paths. They were <laughs> created by us, people, whatever. Um, a lot of them, especially like uh, the one lane roads that go up, I was raised on a farm. Matter of fact, uh, I, my, my grandparents uh, had a farm up until probably Oh, uh, 20 years before the death when they sold out and moved to back to Missouri. Um, I was born in Oklahoma, so I go through a lot of roads in Oklahoma. And I can tell you that the path from the asphalt road to the house was a little over a quarter of a mile. It was single lane. But it was nonetheless um, basically a road uh, that we had out there, you know, because it had all the barns and stuff like that were, uh, you know, all included in that. Include the road to the house. And there was no concrete until uh, much later. The um, roads are generally maintained by the county you live in. Tarrant County, Dallas County, you know, do a pretty fair job. But you get off into some more of the rural areas and um, maintenance becomes a bit of an issue. Yeah, Mike? I see you got cart and wagon paths up there. Yeah. Do, 
does anybody know why the railroad width is four feet six inches? Oh, I do, I do. Okay, Trapper, what? Four feet eight and a half. The width of a cart going down the road. Rum and Roman Cherry. Yeah. Roman Cherry. Roman Cherry. That's why. That was the axle on a Roman Cherry. It was four feet six inches wide. Somebody's throwing two horses, but. Based on, yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing. Okay, so think about this. If you wanted to know how, how wide to make your wagon pad, take a piece of track standard gauge track and lay it down there and where the rails are that should be your ruts for your wagon think about that that's an easy way to figure out how wide your, your wagon trail should be on your farm so the rail was designed based on the on the rolling cart on the rolling cart <laughs> 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 not the chariot I was always told it's because the cart go horse and buggy. Oh, the it, 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 all, it all evolved up from that point, yeah. No, it, it, it really did. Accommodate the chariots. Yeah. So they were made to accommodate four foot eight and a half. And yeah, twice, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a standard four foot eight and a half. When people came to the United States, most of the people that had those skills for road buildings applied them over here. <laughs> And they were and the axles on the wagon and the axles on the chair like remain the same. The same. So oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, getting back to what we're talking about. Um, yeah. We have to we have to come back down and, and look at it. Now, Mike brought up the thing about ruts. Okay, now here's the thing about ruts. And we're gonna sell me show you some we're gonna get some examples going here in a little bit. What is it about a rut? I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen some people model ruts where, you know, half the wheel would be buried in the rut. Not going to happen, guys. Why? Your bottom of your car is going to hit first. Thank you. That's the biggest reason. But even, but even, bef even before, think about it. Does, do, do we have 360 days of rain here? No. So we have, we get rain, we get it in session so we if we have a wet road do we have ruts probably if we especially we have a dirt road maybe even a little bit with gravel but that was one of the reasons that we went to gravel was to do away with uh, having to do all the maintenance for ruts but what happens when the ground dries out and you dry over it drive over it all those rut edges flattened get flattened out so don't get too carried away I mean have ruts yes <laughs> but don't don't go crazy with them um, and so basically all I'm going to do is uh, this is a dirt road um, and in for whatever reason the resolution is not as good as I would like it to be so I tried uh, tried this a little bit this is a single path remember I was talking about heavy machinery okay this is actually a single lane road going up to a logging camp and if you notice, here are the tread marks. But even better than that, the heck with all of that. Notice what the dirt's doing over here. And over here. Heavy equipment will cause the dirt to span down. Keep that in mind when you're in. So basically, if you want to look at it, this is one giant rut. If you want to, if you really want to get carried away with it. But also look at what it is. I mean, you know, how how it uh, is shaped basically it's still a relatively smooth road it's pushing dirt out because it's got it's got heavy equipment that's going back and forth and it's pushing it out to the edges also the middle of the road why because there's no traffic on it but <laughs> something you know grass will grass grow oh absolutely uh, so it, you know we're going to get what I, all I'm trying to say is that scenery, guys, is your vision. Use your vision, and you, when you're recreating scenery, it's, in, it's, it's the vision that you have in your head that you're going to put down on your layout. Now, here is one of our muddy examples. This is a ring. You're still not going to get half a tire in any of those ruts. And that's a muddy road. Um, another example, like I said, these are all just examples of roads. Now here's your rut. This again is a single lane road. Um, 
And I was, I was torn between making it part of the dirt road example or making it part of the gravel road example, which I'll show you here in a second. But, um, you know, it's got debris. I mean, you know, we got stuff that fall on the road. This is, this is again, rural. This is not in your city, so we're not going to go too crazy, but um, you can see that there's basically, for the rain rise, there's almost a, a small stream down the middle of the roads where it's been washed out. But when, and this was taken after uh, a rain, so we can see, you know, we can see an example of, of a washout. But the thing is, again, we know that as traffic runs down here. This, this thing will fill in and if this is a road to a private house and I can attest to it as a uh, 10, 12, 13 year old child, my job when we got ruts was to take a pickaxe and a shovel and fill them in. Other people do that too. Uh, so, you know, Roads are not necessarily the best maintained roads in the world, but here's another example. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw the signs in just for fun. Um, that, that's the upgrade to that road. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love that part. Uh, yes. Uh, I threw that in. But keep in mind, <clears throat> this is how roads are maintained in rural areas. I mean, this is this is no, same thing with with the. Uh, I don't have an example of them, uh, you know, sh you know, <clears throat> putting out um, gravel in the in the gravel roads. But you know, you can see how the roads are maintained. So when you're building your roads, kind of keep this in mind. This is going to be this is a, basically a single laid road that's wide enough that someone can pull to the side for another person to pass. Yeah, Tom. One thing to remember is that when those go by, it's not smooth after it. Yeah. Because I've been on roads after those, and it's like a greater because they're little. And well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, the tires are alone. I mean, you know, you can see that he's basically creating his own ruts as he goes, but it is it is better than than what it was before. There's generally, a natural uh, frequency that he goes down there. He's bouncing up and down. So the road, road behind it will have horizontal stripes across it. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're, um, but the thing that, you know, I like, and when I look at this picture, is what's happening over here on, on the sides. Because, you know, the dirt's got to go somewhere that he's scraping up. And so it's piling up on the side. Will they, will they do some things to adjust that? And the answer is yeah, they will. But also notice that uh, right over here, yeah. This will actually show up better when, when, I, when I put it in the, in the PDF and, uh, you know, put it on, you know, you guys have it up on the website, you'll actually get have, have the better, have a better quality picture. This wall is not really as great in detail as I would like it to be, but you get the idea. Um, I'll come back to this later. Um, uh, gravel roads. The contour, you know, the other roads didn't have a, basically anything. I mean, they were just scraped out earth. But if you look at it, basically, if you look at a cross section for a gravel road, that's what it looks like. Um, it's not anything to read, uh, you know, to write home about. But notice, part of the design is a ditch on each side. We used to call them bar ditches. Uh, I'm not sure that that's always necessarily the most appropriate name, but for us out in the country, they were bar ditches, and um, um, it was it was what it was. Uh, example: this is a this is a country road aggregate. You know, just you can see where again it collects on the sides. Um, there's um, various size stones. You can see the paths in there. You can see where the tires have been. Uh, here's a narrower one. And this looks like it was in, it's around fall time. And uh, you know, as you drive down through there, the leaves and stuff are pushed off to the edge. I mean, you're looking at details. Gravel is used on a lot, especially in rural areas, for parking lots. So, 
this is supposedly a road that is also a parking lot because it's servicing uh, you know this particular facility but the you, you kind of get the idea this is a relatively fresh uh, aggregate and like I said I use a lot of a lot of stuff to do that one and then the one that we're really going to I'm going to try to focus on a little bit more today because of the nature of what we're doing is the asphalt and there's an asphalt road now that asphalt does not look like the no, type of asphalt we have around here it's used mainly in rural areas it's mainly used uh, especially out towards the well in Texas from Texas on out uh, through California uh, on very rural areas where they want to keep the dust down they want to keep uh, the road from you know being totally washed out with the rain if they ever get any as you can see this is a pretty dry area and this is a cheap road but it has the tar the bituminous that's put in it just to lay it down and cover the path yeah Ken but I was stationed on Guam all the roads were made with coral yeah it's it really yep. dangerous when it rains <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet. So, I mean, do they do a, do they do a pretty good job of crushing the coral, or? Uh, no, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the aggregate. They call it aggregate. It's slippery. Yeah, yeah it's. Um, yeah, let's make an observation. Yeah. Uh, I drove the Alaska Highway in '64. Yes. And it was uh, 1,500 miles of it was gravel, and the reason was that they said because of permafrost. If they paved it with asphalt, it would develop humps. Yep. And if they kept it gravel, they could grade it out flat. But uh, maintaining the asphalt road was almost an impossibility because of the of the temperature below the ground. Yeah, I, well, I know that I, I didn't really look at the roads that much when I was up on up around Prudhoe Bay. But uh, yeah, there are places that you can go on uh, around that uh, they have some pretty unique qualities or you pretty pretty unique situations that they have to adjust for. I mean, it, it's, we'll talk about concrete roads and why why do you see right after they lay down a concrete road? Why do you see the guy with a big cutting machine cutting a slice in the road? Expansion out. Right. Why? because of hot and cold expansion and needing the concrete to have a little bit of flexibility so it doesn't crack out. There you go. Now, if they don't, what do they put in that expansion joint to protect it from water being soaked into, because concrete will soak up water. Okay, and water freezes, what does that do to the concrete? Right. Yeah, so they'll go along and they, you know, they'll pour tar down an expansion joint because tar will expand and contract uh, under the pressure of the concrete and not hurt the concrete too much. Yeah, we, we will, you know, that's a lot of things that we, that's some of the things for stuff we get to get, to get into. Like I said, I primarily wanted to get up to um, this point to start showing a little bit about concrete. This is a, this is a, con uh, this is a um, um, black top road, an uh, asphalt road. But what I want you to notice is the direction of the cracks. Okay? Most of the cracks, not all of them, most of the cracks run the length of the road, the roadway in there. Well, it's not quite, it's just traffic. Re repeated traffic. I mean, will we get to those that will spread out this way? Uh, you know, with why? And the answer is yes. But, you know, that's, you know, that again is with, but the, the major, the major joints, and all of those, um, they obviously haven't done too good of a job here of filling those with tar, which is what they normally do for road maintenance. But here's another example. This one's up towards Canada. And, um, you know, again, the major cracks, but we also see one going across. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of, of the variance in the holes and so forth. Uh, this one here is an older road that probably they will come back in, grade off, and totally redo because they, they've let this one here go too far. But the other thing that it, uh, yeah, I wanted you to see about it is that, you know, yeah, do we put lines on them? Absolutely, for passing uh, lines. When uh, we got that, now this is the one. 
This is for the really advanced modeler. Um, I'm not in that category. So I'm going to let somebody else uh, you know, try it out and, 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 and show me the results. But, I mean, that is an asphalt road. Uh, in fact, if you were to go over towards Discount Hobby or Discount Model Trains and look at the roads just around there. Because I did that the other day while I was trying to figure out what, how I was, what I was going to present. Uh, there are some examples that look just like that. Just around Discount Model Trains. Yeah, uh, so there's a closer shot, a uh, little patchwork, um, uh, some more, and you can see the patchwork associated with the asphalt road. Again, noting that, yeah, in modern times, you're going to have lines. Question. Yo. Do you have a suggestion as to what size of pin to make those, or how do you make those black stripes? I make it out of a very fine pin, which is one of the things I want to. I'll talk about here in a little bit. But um, the the point is, is that all of those. If I were making that road and I was using this photo as a example of an asphalt road I'm getting ready to put together, then I use it. There's Sharpie has a very fine point. I think it's called ultra fine. It's either ultra fine or fine. Anyway, point and. You just, you literally draw them on. But keep in mind, even though if we were to go out and look at, you know, that guy right there, we would see a little bit of hump of a tar. But when we reduce that down to 187, it's flat. <laughs> we, we don't need the hump. Yeah, Mike. When my wife stopped doing scrapbooking, she had some really fine, fine pins that they use in the scrapbooking. Yes. And that's what I use to draw those lines on with mine. Because, again, that looks where it is, but if you <coughs> reduce that down to 187, that line is going to be ultra, ultra, ultra fine. So that was one of the things. That if you go to the scrapbooking section at Hobby Lobby, you can find these, these pens that are very, very, very fine point on them, and that's what I use to do that. Also, when you're, if you're creating the, uh, the, the line, the, the road markers there, uh, I tend to use um, a very fine map tape type of, type of stuff that you can find in drafting. Yeah. Do you know approximately what time period they started putting the white stripes on either side of the road? Uh, during the 50s. Was it? Okay. Yeah, during the late 50s. All right. Um, and you know, I mean, just like everything, it had you know, it, it had to progress, but primarily during the, and it didn't hit the, you know, a lot of the. This this would have to have been a main road, because if you got off into one of the uh, the, the county roads or whatever, it may or may not have any kind of striping on it whatsoever. So this is probably like a, a state highway or a state whatever, and I don't remember exactly where this one, because this is one of the few pictures I think I got off Google. By the way, Google images, key in, you know, dirt road, key in, uh, gravel road, concrete road, whatever you want, you'll get all kinds of examples. So feel free to, you know, Google's your friend, or can be. Question? Yeah. You, you, I think you said earlier the width of a road was 12 feet. To the lane. The lane. Now, on this highway here, would that be to your white or to the shoulder? To the white. To the white would be 12 feet? Yeah, should be. Okay. And then you'd have, what, about three foot of shoulder? Can. You know. I, <laughs> depending upon where it is, your shoulder could drop off two feet. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, if you go back to the original you know, drawing we had back there of the asphalt road, basically, you know, they, 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 you know, the curvature of the road could drop it off into a ditch, literally. Do you know the standard uh, between between stripes is that eight foot, ten foot, twelve? From stripe to stripe, the yellow stripes. You yeah. mean like from here to here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are what, 19 foot long? Yes. 20, something like that. Right. Yeah, it, it's. And, and, and the separation is about the same. It is okay. Yeah, you know, you should be able to take a stripe and 
put it down and, and go across. I mean, there's, um, I will tell you that my experience is, I've gone to places where I thought, that, we see them now, the little little bitty short stripe, that's just before you get to an exit, letting you know that you're, you're coming up on an exit. Now, if you're driving down, uh, you know, like the, the expressway or one of the interstates, you have the normal striping, and then you have, but you know, depending upon the era, you were in that changed that was when you know there were there were rules but not rules there were things that yes you needed to mark the center line people decided that that was an important thing to do uh, but we, we as you remember earlier we had a center line example because that was an older photo of an older road it had no sidelines where the where the road edge was um, where you were the, if you're there to the shoulder um, and so Era becomes important again. And location. And location. Yes. I never saw a white stripe on the side in Arkansas. <laughs> no, Arkansas didn't have a lot of, and, and Oklahoma didn't either, especially during the uh, places where uh, uh, I lived. Now, if you went around Tulsa, Oak City, yeah. Uh, no, no problem. And but you know, when I was out at uh, Wagoner, Cherokee, or wherever, um, Oak Mulgee, uh, in those areas, as a kid growing up, no, there were no, there were no, no marks. County, and you can see every kind of road. No, no man. <laughs> they got every kind of road. <laughs> I can, I can, yeah. I mean, yes, and we still have, we still have a lot of, a lot of things like. Anyway, this is just a closer example. This is the tar uh, that you know, goes in there, and this is some of the material we're going to talk about. Uh, this is a modeling example. So you know when you're working on um, and, you, and you need some. This is this is going to be uh, you know something that somebody wants to uh, work on. Uh, well, yeah, we have structure. Uh, we obviously have a low maintenance period, um, and. Um, I just, I, I don't know who had the sense of humor to build a cage and put the rubber duckies there, but I, for whatever reason, it struck my sense of humor and uh, I went with it. So this is a modeling opportunity. <laughs> So, you yeah, know, feel free. For that Absolutely. Um, well, actually, it's off the edge of the road. Yeah, it's on the. Uh, <laughs> but. Did you see where they planted like a small tree in it? I think. Did, did you see where lightning struck in Lake Worth the other day and blew a hole in that parking lot? Yeah. yeah. Up close and personal, that looked like a bomb went off in there. Yeah, I, I, it's I, over I, there by Leo's yeah. house. That's right too far from my house. It's right behind where Leo lives. Yeah, it's that Chevron when yeah. you make the curve. Yeah. This is off someone's layout. We won't mention whose, but he tends to interrupt a lot. Um, <laughs> oh, that's that's the down. Why? When I was when I was working on scenery for my MMR, this was one of my uh, series of my projects that I, I was working on. I was on, yeah, I was on Mike's layout. Um, this is a this is nothing more than a gravel uh, parking lot. Okay, and if, you know as we'll as we advance through there, you'll see the things. I mean, you have your um, your, your grade crossings right here for coming across, and the, and you can you know get across for vehicles and uh, whatever reason we had. You know, we, there's always oil lines, water lines, something, some kind of line in the concrete where some truck has come along with and, and it's leaking something. And so you're, you're always going to have those. It's, this is this one of those things that you have those opportunities. So you make sure that, that you put them, you know, you can do them one way or that. This is uh, the same building, two different angles, depending upon which way you want to look at it, of again, a gravel road crossing over um, the track and going into an adjoining industry. And keep in mind when you're doing that, all parking lots, I don't care where it is, has oil drips on it. 
It's going to have lines on it. Um, you're going to have some, some ruts, but again, keep in mind, most businesses are going to be conscious about the roadway, about their parking lot, because they don't want the customer being ticked off because he can't get in and out of their parking lot. Now, when he crosses the track and goes onto the county road, you're on your own. But um, this is a couple of things that we did. This is an asphalt road that we did. And unfortunately, because you can't see it, there are, you got the cracks along the road that you would, we were talking about earlier, drawn with the pen that Mike was talking about. <coughs> You can see where the asphalt went across, and because this asphalt road actually came into this town right here. Um, this was a uh, asphalt um, parking lot servicing that facility, and the road's going up and down there. There should have been lots of little cracks and things like that. It will show up better on the PDF when you guys get a chance to look at it. But again, holes. Um, you know, there's lots of little bitty spots, bigger spots. It's all part of it. You can't screw it up is what I'm trying to tell you. Once you, once you have the, you know, the material down, you have, you have basically a good roadway, a road, good roadbed, you're going to find it very difficult to screw up. I think you may be underestimating some of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we can do it. <laughs> Yeah. But um, okay. Can I have some lights? Where do I? Yeah. Okay. We can turn that thing there off. Jeff, one of the other things that I've noticed: uh -huh. concrete roads, in particular, is more prevalent. If you go along the highway and there's a dip mm -hmm. road or a bump in the road, just immediately past that, there'll be a dark spot on the pavement. That's where the drips on everybody's cars come off when they hit that dip. Yeah. And that's something that's kind of a nice detail if you just add a real faint dark spot just past that dip. Gotcha. Uh, this, I decided when I was trying to put together this presentation that uh, we were going, asphalt roads, gravel roads, and dirt roads are all pretty much done the same. They're all maintained pretty much in the same manner. And I said, you know, it'd be helpful if I could probably begin giving some kind of an example or whatever. Now, this is, this is, and I couldn't do that here because for the asphalt to dry, or the glue to dry, and then for us to, for me to take it a step further, uh, you guys probably didn't want to wait a couple hours, twiddling your thumb, eating donuts, and, and and maybe having a soda or two. We could probably go to lunch and come back, but you know that seemed like a, an excessive amount of time. But this is basically how I start, and this was done in a very big hurry. Uh, to, and I'll, I'll show you. This is this is this is the first coat on everything. Therefore, it's the rough part. And um, by the way, one of the things I discovered, and the reason that the paper is on the back, um, not all paints, and I'm not a person who uses a lot of um, styrofoam or foam insulation, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had, um, if you used a camouflage group of um, Krylon paint. Example right there. Yeah. Specifically, this is what I was using. It will eat the styrofoam. And so that's why the, uh, the piece of paper was on the back. It also doesn't dry for three or four days, <laughs> which was also not in my schedule. Uh, I was trying to uh, get that. Uh, other, the other forms of Krylon paints, uh, you know, I use this um, painter's touch, work just fine. But what we did, like I said, so, so be careful on your choice of paints. I use those paints because I paint everything first. You know, wherever I'm going to put a roadway down, I go in and I don't care if it's on homosote, micor, styrofoam. I don't want the pink, the white, the gray necessarily, but I want to know when I'm down to that level. That's the reason that all that was it was done. And if um, oh, I guess if I go back and do 
Um, <sighs> Hope I didn't screw up too much. If I did, I apologize. Layer of that ground loop that you yes. Specified? Yeah, that's the, that's the first layer. Now, that's not the dirt I'm going to use. Because keep in mind, look at the color of the dirt road. All right? And so that's going to be the color of most of the dirt because the dirt road is going to be the color of the dirt. Dirty. Okay, what I use the ground goop for more than anything else is texture. One of the things that I, you know, I have a hard time getting across to people, I'm, whether they're dealing with rust or they're dealing with scenery, it's about um, texture. Uh, okay. But sorry, I was getting 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 away. But anyway, it, it, it's about texture. Your eye will see a color, but a lot of times the color that you see is also based upon how it's presented to you. I mean, let's face it, that's, that's for all, true for all of us. I mean, if, if you asked a, um, a, a, a physics person what black is, it's an, absent, it's an absence of color. It means that all light, quote unquote, on a truly black surface is being absorbed and not reflected. What is white? All colors being reflected at the same time. And so, arrow over the slideshow. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, if I can just go down, I can. I can show because I just had a. But uh, I, like I said, I'm sorry I screwed up. This is my fault. Uh, I couldn't I seem to get it over to the slideshow there. The. Um, but so keep in mind that and when I'm doing because I love doing scenery okay scenery was one of the th fun things I have I probably enjoy the scenery as much as I do uh, building of a structure or you know, or anything else uh, and I'm 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 actually one of the people that's actually bored at most operation sessions <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm the person who volunteers to do the uh, passenger train and be the engineer and the passenger. Why? Because passenger trains, first of all, have, have the right of way, no matter what. <coughs> Secondly, uh, I don't have to do any switching. And I can get from one end of the layout to the other end of the layout and usually back again. Oh, okay. And... Um, and so that's that's what I volunteer, you know, like almost always about. Do I get stuck with the other stuff? And the answer is yes. But I'm no. I'm not I'm not as, as as enthusiastic. I like the scenery. I love going and saying, oh wow, I didn't think about that. It's the bushes, the shrubs, the dirt, uh, the roadways, the, all that stuff. Those are the things that I like. The ballast on the track. But I love the ballast on the track and getting the rail ready for, uh, uh, you know, for, for doing that. I mean, you can ask Mike. I mean, that's where I spend all my time. Uh, ah, no problem. You added the notes. <laughs> yeah, it, um, but anyway, to make a long, um, no. All right, yeah, um, let's, uh, I, I can go, can we go to, go to the next one? Yeah. All right. This is this is where I started. Okay. I finally got it painted. Once I discovered that you know the paint was going to destroy some of the styrofoam, I went back and put paper on the back that you can see it back there, and then I just taped off an area for whatever. Uh, cut myself a little bit of a ditch on each side of the road for the asphalt. No big deal. Can we go down the next one? <coughs> Okay, threw in some ground goop because I just wanted to give it some texture. I was not making this piece of thing here as artwork. Right now was to get the basics down so we could we could you know have something to talk about and something to relate to. Uh, yes, do you remember the ground goop that uh, we made almost a year ago? Yep. Right there, and it's still usable. It's on on the on the on the layout, so it keeps a long time. Um, also, can we go to the next one? Okay, I peel the tape off. 
Uh, you can see that I laid out, you know, the basic color. Uh, so, you know, basically, and I know I'm going to have to put culverts right there for the roadway to go over. You know, basically the, the little pipes that, the, the, you know, the pipe that is usually a corrugated pipe mm -hmm. that goes across there. People then fill in with the dirt and gravel and stuff like that so they can drive over it. But, um, you know, I knew it was going to be there and it's on wherever it is. Uh, next one. Okay, now I started putting down the roadways. I just threw down a, a rough surface. As you can see, I got a little bit out there. Here, I'll get rid of that. Uh, and down here, I need to probably shape this up a little bit better. Here's a dirt road. Now that dirt color, which is the color that I choose to use for a lot of a lot of my scenery, uh, you know, will also go off in here. But I wasn't highlighting my ability to do scenery, I was highlighting roads. And so that's where we were going with it. And that's why I went through that to show you, to get you to the to this right here. Because the first thing that I say, I don't care what you like to say about that asphalt, it's ugly. Because that looks like somebody put it down yesterday. Or today. And we're falling behind it. And that's not the roads that we see. What we end up seeing, now I can go back to the lights. Um, what we see is something that looks more like, okay, where did I put it? Let's clip it on. Okay. I'm sorry? It looks like Dave's sweatshirt. Yeah. A toned down version of black. The, um, what I do with my asphalt, and I like using the Arizona Stone um, asphalt that looks like that. It comes in packages like that that I put in there because I use a lot of it. But the thing that I like is once I start treating it, and keep in mind, this was just the first coat. Uh, I usually do you know, at least two coats on just about everything for the same reason that you put on two coats of paint. Uh, because I'm going to um, do some surfaces here. And that to me is more the color that I'm used to seeing for asphalt. Coats of what? White glue and that okay. asphalt mix? Okay. What, what are you using to discolor that? Is that just sanding it down? Sanding yeah, it down? I'm just sandpaper. Just a sanding block? Yeah, this is this is sanding block, and I would say it's probably about 100 grit. Okay. Let me trace it here. Uh, and so I, uh, I, I do that. Now, what I have not done is that there is another asphalt out there that I'm, I'm beginning to like a little bit. Um... And Dick can identify with that one. Yeah, it works. That now, uh, my wife will kill me if I get my shirt too dirty. And just the asphalt for um, the Arizona stone is that white glue and? Yes. Uh, you take this, you mix mix it with 50/50 uh, um, white glue, and more along the lines of. Like I do there. In case you guys want to know, yes, I eat a lot of onion dip. Um, <laughs> and so, now, I like the Arizona Stone better than I do the, uh, the other one, but it works, and it works well. What I actually use this for is the holes. I want to do patchwork. It's a great contrast. Um, to me, when I sand this, I get too glossy of a finish because it is a vinyl. Okay? It's shiny. Yeah. Um, it is a vinyl. I don't like it as well. Okay. This one doesn't, doesn't get shiny on me. And when I get ready to start um, This is not my normal pen, but it'll do the job. Notice how the fine point. When I start getting ready to yes. put a, put some cracks in the in the roadway. And 
and down here for whatever reason it doesn't it doesn't it just doesn't have it for me okay this is greater contrast so it shows up better and that's you know and that's why I do it I want I want something that will give me uh, the thing and like I said this is just a first layer on the uh, um, the gravel road and there. now you would say okay well you know why, why didn't you just go ahead and finish it out well I can and we can you know we can spend some time doing it I mean I've already got the glue there uh, I've got um, crappy brush okay I mean it's really a crappy brush I can grab some of the white glue And keep in mind, I'm doing this. Uh, normally, I would do the, you know do this quicker than I would here. But since I was having to do this as a as a demo, you know, there it is. Um, I like this is McCormick's. They made various. Um, spices and herbs and stuff like that that you get in there but the thing is it has a small shaker and it's it's not it's not a huge bottle so I can I can come along and I can start laying it down and putting down on the uh, the road what it is that you know I want I, I have people and I do also do this I will take a spoon Wife doesn't know she's missing one. Um, but I'll take the spoon, and I'll have the material in it, and I'll just come along and tap it. And actually, this will put out a, a wider, wider stretch. You can already see that the, uh, the material is being absorbed by the glue, so it's, it's sticking. Um, but you know, you, you know, to see the final result, you're going to have to uh, you let it you know you're gonna to have to obviously let it dry and whatever now the thing that you want to remember also is that you don't want to stop the dirt road because people coming off this road are going to turn and you know I'm uh, it's not gonna show up right now because of the glue but um, you can um, you're going to you're going to have the you know you're going to have the dirt but like i said it's one of those things where you work with it this is how uh i build this is how i build my roads flat out mike can tell you that he's he's gone around and looked he says really see mike's an operations guy me i'm I'm always into scenery, uh, the culverts and so forth. Anyway, you know, start putting on the second. Layer. You do the same thing with uh, with the gravel road. You go back. You can paint it. Um, it all started. The very first coat I put down was straight glue. I just hit my, hit, uh, hit hit it with you know hit my two roads right there with glue got the aggregate down the dirt down and went from there um, when I get ready to do uh, the scenery on the rest of it basically it's going to look something along those lines where I, I actually have it in there notice that a lot of the some of the roughness that we're that you're used to seeing that right now it's there it's texture because not all of it's going to go away um, and it is for those people who've done crown group now the um where i'm going to go with this is that i know that in january and february we're going to have the um make and take and I'm, i think mike has already been alluding to the idea that you know there for those who don't want to do the make and take we need to do something else tell me if i'm wrong mike Am I wrong? No. Oh, okay. So we'll have an opportunity to do something more along. Today was the introduction. 
to playing with roads. And that's really why I wanted to get to. I really wanted to kind of get in here and show what we can do with it. Um, and get you thinking about, as you're driving along, you're going to be driving on, on primarily asphalt roads and, and concrete roads. Look at the road. Oh, don't do it if you're in heavy traffic. <laughs> Look at the roads. Look at the maintenance that is done or not done. Look at the cracks. Look how it was repaired. Because those are the things that make modeling to, to, to the, especially to the other people, to your friends, your peers, interesting. All of a sudden they see something. Whoa, God, where, do you, where do you get that? Well, hey, if you were driving down you know, 635, you know, along about Midway Road there, you saw this crack. Or you saw this repair. I'm driving down Bell Line Road. And, you know, if you notice the little, little, little crack, I was on my way over to, uh, uh, I was driving down, I guess it would be uh, Arapahoe Road, driving over to Discount Model Trains. And as I got over to um, that area and there, and I started, kept looking at the roads, they were doing some repairing. We can see the, you can see the repair work. I'm not saying spend the rest of your life doing it, but if it's something that you're going to model, spend enough time looking at it so that you almost understand it and get that image in your mind because that's what you want to translate to here whatever it is yeah Mike just out of curiosity would it be possible to put some masking tape or something down and then put a layer of that asphalt over the top of it and then peel the tape back out to leave a chunk hole sure That'd be a, a technique that you think. Yeah, uh, we, we could do that. I'm not sure why we'd want to. Because um, one of the other things that or just you, 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 yeah. you deal with would be something like that. Or, oh, by the way, this is asphalt. I did it about three days ago. And, oh, four days ago, and it's still in there. Um, stir it up a bit if I was going to. But if you airtight container just like you do with the uh, ground goop uh, it'll keep now the 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 what I'm trying to say is it's got to be airtight I've used to in the past I've used like a, a peanut one of those plastic peanut um, containers it'll dry out in a heartbeat give it a couple of weeks yeah I got some ground goop that I had put into one of those and it dried out. I've had this since we since we created what almost a year ago. Um, but the container. This is a food container, so it tend, they tend to make it more airtight than just you know a container like you know like we get stuff. In. Keep in mind that the, your peanuts came with a seal on it and all that stuff. So that's how they kept it fresh. Once you tear the seal off and you put the lid back on, it's no longer airtight. Uh, this has a plastic insert in there that runs up against the rim, so I can make I can turn it back on and turn turn the uh, lid tight enough that it'll seal back up. Uh, if I were a, uh, a um, manufacturer, I would just before I did that I would spray uh, nitrogen in there, get rid of the oxygen altogether, and then tighten it up, which would allow it to seal. That's what your PVA is done just before they put the lid on is hit it with a shot of nitrogen. They don't try to freeze it. They just they just want to remove the air. Yes, sir. I missed something somewhere. What are you making the asphalt out of? Arizona. Either of those. Um, Arizona stones. One. Arizona stone. Arizona stone. Arizona stone. Is the, that's the that's the one I prefer. Because uh, I, I can do more with it, yes, sir. <coughs> Uh, it's stone. It's something that uh, you know they have ground up and, and turned to a pigment. It's small. You don't sprinkle it. You mix it with white glue, 50/50, and this. Now I will tell you to add the add the glue to the add the glue to the powder and stir because you can get too much glue in there and then it, you've turned it from being um, pasty like to liquid and it actually will become a paint. This is almost a pigment. 
Okay. So you say you made that other chart days ago. It's black. Did you paint? Is it a no. color of rock? That's what I, that's no. That's what it starts off as. You mix it to a consistency of what? Uh, I mix it to a consistency of somewhere in a neighborhood of about warm butter, but not 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 where not where butter has melted. But you know, well, you've left it sitting out on the counter. Okay, it's soft. When you apply it, you want to put glue down or anything? Nope. That and or depending upon how wide I want to go, those. Okay. And then yeah, Jim. Well, when you're building the basic roadbed, I don't know what you do or how you do it, but I found that if I lay out the roadbed with plaster, plaster when it dries, it's almost impossible to sand it or shape it. Yeah. But if you then come back and put a coat of joint cement over the plaster, the joint cement will sand easily. You can chip out chug holes. You can do all sorts of things with the uh, uh, with the joint cement that you couldn't do when if you had just stopped with the plaster. And that's basically what I'll do for a lot of the concrete roads, is something along those lines. Part of the problem today in doing that <coughs> is that if you don't go to like, you know, go get yourself some uh, Plaster Paris or HydroCal, is that uh, the manufacturers for those things have put vinyl in it. And it becomes, um, it's, it's like spackling. Spackling is not the old spackling compound that we used to use. Uh, spackling is now a, is a vinyl based product. Um, and as a result of that, it, it's just too shiny. Um, and so you know, if I do that, then I gotta go back and make sure I paint it. Like I said, there are, there are a number of different ways and they're all successful. I've used HydroCal for my for when I first started doing um, asphalt roads, and then you sort of painted, you know, painted it black, and then you can't sand it. Yeah, but you can't sand it. Um, uh, I, I like I like being able to I like the Arizona Stone for the very reason that I just did. I can sand it. And that to me is not a new, I don't, I don't want to necessarily a freshly laid asphalt road. Will I put some somewhere? Yeah. Do I want to have freshly uh, filled potholes? Oh yeah. It stands out. Can you put another layer there? <laughs> yeah, I usually use, I usually use uh, one to two layers or I put down a very heavy layer. And depending upon where it is, it depends on accessibility. If I'm having to reach three feet across, I only want to do that once. Okay? Um, and, and, but I'm going to do that. Like I said, I'm going to put, I'm going to use the Arizona paving material just because I like the result. No other reason. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the end all solution, guys. It's just that I like. They find something else. I know Dick likes this. And he will he will swear by it. The problem that I have with this is that I can't sand it and I can't clean it up. And I like being able to clean things up to make it look you know worn. Because it's just the um, you know it's me being an asshole. I get I get retentive every once in a while. And it's just what it fits into my memory and what I think. Okay, so uh, talking about how you, how, how you laid that stuff down for the entire city of Richardson. Oh, I mean on your layout? Yeah, no, that's exactly what I did. Except I used a trowel, depending upon the, how, how the size of the road. Um, the entire city is blacktop, and I mean we spread it out. He spread it out because he was working on his scenery stuff on a on a module that's three feet wide by about six or seven feet long. He laid the whole thing down. We had to track down and everything. The city. So and came back in right up to the edge of the, the tracks. Put it right up to the edge of the tracks, and then everything was good. The then came back and put the buildings on top of it and then put the sidewalks down. So now you've got 
the, the, the street, the sidewalk, the building, everything in that whole area. And we covered an entire area of the city and made it scenic in a matter of hours getting ready for the SN3 symposium. Yes. Which is the pictures I show. Like I said, there's more detail in the pictures than, I, than, than got, got projected up here. And I apologize for that, but that's, you know, a little bit beyond my control. Um, the thing is, is that what I did or what I'm telling you about is not the end all solution you may find something that works for you i mean jim has obviously you know done some work with plaster i have tried that i found that this was easier and faster for me there are times when i get struck you know get stuck uh and so i you know I, I tend to do things that become easy for me and um hmm, somebody's going in and out my door um, so that's what I, that's that's how I did. It's, it's like the ground goop. Do I? Does everybody going to use the ground goop? No. I I picked up that from Lou Sassy because I liked it. It was a way of putting down texture before I put down the the material that I actually wanted there to represent my ground or my or whatever it is that I was doing. Uh, I like the texture. To me, texture is everything around me is texture. If I touch this wall, I should know that that wall has been textured because I can I can see it and if I can't project that or put that in the model then I'm, I've lost part of the fun uh, roads are not flat therefore they have character they have cracks in them they have been repaired they have been graded off they have been all those kinds of things um, structures for me are not all wooden structures there's some of them are, are, are going to be brick cinder block now i have mike has told me that there was someone that he knows because he's now producing these little bitty cinder blocks and he wants to build a building out of cinder blocks i want to see it because <laughs> i'm not that angle retentive um but you know that was now but the thing is is that you um it's your vision this is how I put my, put my vision down. We're going to do concrete later on. I don't have any questions, but I'm just going to throw something out that I saw that was very, very interesting. Back in the spring, I went to a train show in Taylor, and there was a guy that was part of the Katy Historical Society that had a layout in way south Austin. I went to it. He is a former Marine. His son is, is still in the Marine Corps. His son had gone to Iwo Jima and sent him a coffee can full of sand from the beaches of Iwo Jima. <laughs> he made an Iwo Jima Memorial Highway on his layout with this material. It looked, looked, like, uh, looked like an asphalt road, only it had a lot of other lighter colors in it. But I thought how neat that is to have a road on your layout with sand from Iwo Jima. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. Oh, it's just like you know, said, this material, uh, which is a little bit is in here. Could you mix uh, uh, some sand with it? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons I like I like you know, I like working with this, uh, is that I can add things to it, take away things. I don't generally do that a lot, but there, there will be places like um, right here where the gravel road meets the asphalt road, because gravel, the tire's gonna pick up gravel and it's going to it to, uh, same thing with the dirt. You can see we're, we're getting a little dirt around the dirt road, which we were showing earlier. Um, the, it's your vision and you know logically how things work I mean sometimes we take it for granted but we really know how something works and that's why, why we are able to take it for granted and we can kind of move on from there um, any other questions I mean like I said I use Arizona stone one of the things we're going to work with is and in, in the next next time around is um, you know the concrete I'm gonna use their concrete there's also uh, AK has a concrete and I'll, we're going to show you we'll get to see you know why I like 
one or the other. The concrete actually works out pretty good. Um, earth. I, I tend to use a light earth because it shows up, allows me to see detail better. There's, you know, it, it's a dark earth. And you don't dump it out as a package, you spread it around. This will cover you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of territory if you, if you allow it. Like I said, it's one of those things where um, do I have you know, other colors? Yeah. Um, there's concrete, weathered concrete. Uh, we're going to get a look at concrete. That's the next time around. However, getting back to what I started to talk about, Mike is going to put together filler clinics, and I'm, I'm, he's told me to prepare for one. But I'm going to give you homework. <clears throat> if you're going to participate in that, uh, I will bring some brown goop. Which, but more than that, I'm not bringing... Um, the um, styrofoam, the foam board. Either get a piece of foam board or even get a piece of wood. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But, you know, make it about, oh, I don't know, this is probably, what, about 10 inches by about 14 inches there? Make it, make it big enough that you can put a road or something on and, and, and work with, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, paint it a brown. You know, if you get, you know, I don't care what color brown, it's not going to be your main color. It just allows you to seal the wood and gives you a base. Because one of your things you're going to find out, especially if you use wood, is that the PVA will suck out of, out of whatever you got it in, into the wood, really quickly. And it won't give you the same surface adhesion that you want for your roads. So, paint it whatever color you want. Lay out a road that you want on there. Maybe you want a little curve in it. Maybe you want whatever. That's your homework assignment. You know, it's not going to happen until either January or February. So, you know, do your homework. Stick it back on a shelf someplace. And when we get together, we'll talk some more about this. And we'll actually get to experiment more with, uh, with the asphalts. The concrete guy doesn't happen until June. June. The concrete will happen in June. Now, I asked a question in the beginning. Do you want me to break this presentation up out on for the website into four presentations? One for dirt road, one for car, or do you want it? Okay, I got three, four, okay, four. Done deal. That's what I'll do, and I'll tailor it towards uh, the, the individual four. You, you mentioned about the width of highways for the military. Yeah. When I was at Boxdale, you know, in, in Louisiana, if the governor has a road who has a, contra has a contract that he builds those things, Okay, so on the on the east side of the west side of the Red River, they built a parkway. They didn't go anyplace. Okay, uh, but it was four lanes. It was built just like an interstate. And so what happened is the Louisiana National Guard used their tanks for exercises. So if you drove on it, you had to watch out for tanks. That's crazy. Sounds like Louisiana. Yeah. 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 And 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 if you got it, if you got into a, a traffic. Jam, with one millimeter, he tends to clear his own path. <laughs> when he was running for governor in Louisiana, he told everybody he on the, the he'd been elected three or four times as governor yeah. over there. And the final time, he goes, "You might as well reelect me. I've already stole all I'm going to from the treasury. <laughs> but you go ahead and see. But you put somebody else in, they're going to start." Might as well take, put me in office. Right. Well, it's like, uh, that's, that's a gutsy move. On I-20, yeah. big racing thing. Okay. The governor had an interchange built on 20 for nowhere. A full interchange was built there. And that's how the, the racetrack got to be there. Because it was there. It was there anyway. And, and they just went there. But. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.